Break the microphone right there. All right. I am going to get us out of here by 11.30. Do you believe me? <laughs> oh, ye of little faith. All right. Go with me to Malachi chapter 4, verse 9. And yes, some of you, there is a book called Malachi in the Bible. Um, God bless you. Malachi chapter 4, verse 9. Nine. All right, I'm going to open up this Bible right here. <laughs> Thank you. Micah, chapter 4. <laughs> All right, here we go. Verse 9. Now, why do you cry aloud? Is there no king in thee? Is there no king in you? Is your counselor perished? For fangs have taken thee as a woman in travail. What's happening here is this prophet Micah is going to the people of God, the Israel, the Israelites, and they had just gone through a horrible defeat. They had just been taken captive by the Babylonians. King Nebuchadnezzar has just invaded Israel and they have overthrew through them. They took all of the, the educated people, all of the, the strong warriors of Israel, and they took them captive to Babylon. They took the king of Israel, uh, Zedekiah was his name, and they took his whole family. And it's a little gruesome, but what, what happened was is the king of Babylon killed the entire family of King Zedekiah. And then after they killed his family, they gouged his eyes out and took him captive ruthlessly so that the last thing that he would see would be that horrible image. And the people of Israel are, are weeping. They are crying. They are broken. They are devastated. They are living in depression. All of the, 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 the women and the children and and the, the weak people of, of Israel that were left there in the ruins, the aftermath of what Babylon had just done to them. And here's Micah coming on the scene, the prophet of God, speaking the word of God, speaking the truth of God. What is he going to say? And the word that he says to them is, why are you crying? Is there not a king in you? Uh, go with me to Colossians chapter 1 verse 26. And it says, the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations, but has now been revealed to the saints. What is this mystery? To them, God willed to make known what are the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles. What is this mystery? Is Christ in me the hope of glory? You have a hope that can carry you through dark seasons. And that is Christ in you. That's a hope. I did something really stupid uh, this past week that never happens, but, but we, we had a, a big move for my mom. They, they moved everything out of uh, her house. I mean, it was unbelievable the amount of stuff. You, you should get a medal, mom, for, for what you had in that house. Um, and, and we, we <laughs> Suka Suka Vino found a, a pizza from, from 2003 that we ate for lunch. It was still good. Couldn't believe it. Most delicious pizza I ever had. And, and, and just, you know, old new, I found a newspaper article for Short Christian Church's softball team back in 1994. And uh, Dave Joyner was actually in it. Uh, Dave Joyner, who's the coach of our team, same hairdo uh, back then. Same, hasn't changed a bit. Uh, Bob McKee, you're laughing. You were in that article too. Nice mullet, Bob. Nice mullet. I'll show you the picture soon. And, and so uh, just all this stuff, and, and we had so many people for the church coming out, and, and Mary rented a U-Haul. Mary rented this huge U-Haul. Thank you, Mary. And, and we had everyone loaded it up, and, and Chris and Dallas, all the muscle men in the church, picking up couches and wall units and marble tables, and just you know, unbelievable the manpower that was generated by the volunteers in this church for my mom. They, they get it all packed up. And, and then I, I told them, I want to make sure I drive the truck. Because if something bad happens, I want it to be on me, not Mary, <laughs> not Rick, on me. And so I'm like, all right, I'll drive the truck, Mary. Where are the keys? <laughs> let, me check, let me check my purse. Mary's digging through the purse. No keys in the purse. All of a sudden, we, we, we comb the house. Who has the keys? Did someone?
someone drop them outside. We, we get like dogs sniffing the yard trying to look for the keys. And, and suddenly panic starts to sit in. Mary's stressing out. My goodness, I lost the keys. Pastor Isaac is going to kill me. What are we going to do? I mean, we got this truck loaded up. Everyone's here. We got to get it over to the house and unload it while the people are here because you know, like, the people, they're going to leave at 3 o'clock no matter what. Right? You know, it's that time, right? We're lucky if we get them until 3 o'clock, right? It's like a contractor. You know, you hire a contractor. You know, they get there real early and they leave, like, literally right after lunch. I love all the contractors. All right? Don't get me wrong. And, and so we're, we're panicked. We're looking for the keys. And, and then all of a sudden, what did I do? I checked my pockets. <laughs> And you think I make this stuff up. And I got the U-Haul key literally right in my pocket. And the Lord spoke to me, not in that moment, but later on in the week, saying, you have a key in you that could quell the depression and dysfunction and cries and chaos that is taking place in your life. You have a king in you. You. Is there not a king among me? Is there not a king in you? I thought how God doesn't create anything that is worthless. God doesn't create anything that is less than. God created you with a king inside of you. With potential inside of you. And we as a church, our mission is to pull that out of people. Is to walk the streets of our city. Like the Dream Center does every single week. And not look down at people because they don't look like us. Don't look down at people because they don't think like us. But realize that there is a king inside of that homeless yeah. person. There is a king inside of that person that may be gangbanging right now. That may be causing all the trouble in this city. God created that person with the same love he has for you. That's because right. there is a king in them. That's right. And we need not to look down on them. Yeah. There are kings in this church this morning. Amen. There is so much talent right here in this church, and we need to recognize that. Yeah. And a lot of times, people with the most talent are a little weird. <laughs> All right, just being honest with you, okay? They're, they're a little straight. Jimi Hendrix walked into a church when he was 13 years old. He had a hunger to be used by God. He had a hunger to use his music talents at 13 years of age for God. Walked into a church with no shoes on, clothes that didn't really look too well. The ushers at the door threw him out of the church. Jimi Hendrix could have been playing the guitar for the kingdom of God, yep. sitting in the church with a passion for the church, but yep. people looked down the outside of him and said, you don't belong in this church, but there was a king inside Jimi Hendrix. Yep. How many kings are in this church? You don't even know it yet. Yeah. Those of you, may, maybe you're, you're pregnant right now. There's a king inside of you. I thought of Robin Smith. You might have the next Billy Graham inside of you. The, the next Paul White, Catherine Coleman inside of you right now. And we as parents need to talk our children up. Need to believe the best in them. I heard someone say one time, you need to talk to the king inside of your kids, not the fool. Mm, wow. Don't say, you're such a fool, Judah. You're so dumb, Judah. No, 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 no. Judah, you're a king. You're better than that. You were created to not hit your sister or pull the dog's tail. You know? <laughs> Because you speak life over those kids. I, I thought of this story of this man in, in Chicago who was a Sunday school teacher. His name was Mr. Kimball. And Mr. Kimball had this one young man in his, in his school that he saw a king inside of him. And this, this young man had gotten a job at a shoe uh, salesman job in Chicago. And for three weeks in a row, he didn't show up to his Sunday school class. Usually they would just write that person off. Say, all right, all right we'll just write them off. Who's next on the list? But Mr. Kimball went looking for this man. He went looking the streets of Chicago for this man. His name was D.L. Moody. And he found D.L. Moody at that shop in Chicago. And he said, uh, Mr. Moody, there's a king in you. You need to get your butt back into church. You know, I, I'm going to follow up with some people. If I see you not in church, I might, I might call you up. Say, where are you at? You need to get in the house of the Lord because there's a king inside of you. God wants to use you. Your calling isn't out there in the world, but there is a kingdom calling that God has placed.
place on your life. And he saw the king inside D.L. Moody. And D.L. Moody ended up finding, uh, founding the Bible Institutes in America. He's one of the greatest preachers that this world has ever seen. But he would not have existed if it wasn't for a man who saw the king inside of that teenage boy and believed in him enough to follow up with him and talk to him like a man and say, God wants to use you. So, I know you're young, but God can use you when you're young. Yep. I want to talk to the kids, to the teenagers. Don't waste your teenage years out there doing your thing, trying to be cool, trying to be popular, trying to do what everyone else wants to do. Because you realize when you're my age, none of that stuff matters whatsoever. Not even a, not even a little bit. Not even like that much. It literally is meaningless what other people think of you. But it means everything allowing God to use you to reach those kids. Be different. Be different. I thought about this man in London, England. And there was a small church of maybe 15 people. And there was this big snowstorm one night in London, England. And there was very few people that showed up. The pastor didn't even show up. It was that bad. <laughs> pastor didn't even show up to his own service and there was about 10 people in this little tiny church service storefront church and one of the elders got got up and said i didn't have a sermon prepared i, I thought the pastor was going to show up but nevertheless if there's anyone in here that needs a second chance if there's anyone in here that needs jesus jesus can save you tonight 10 people and one person stood up his name was charles spurgeon Charles Spurgeon today is known as the Prince of Preachers. The sermons that we preach from these pulpits, Charles Spurgeon was preaching over a thousand years ago. I've had people tell, that was a great sermon, Pastor Isaac. Yeah, it, it was from a book I read that Charles Spurgeon wrote. He was the first pastor of a megachurch in London, England in the, in the 1800s. Over 6,000 people in his church. But it took someone to say, there is a king inside of you. There's a king in you. Colossians chapter 1 verse 27. Said that there is this mystery. There is a mystery about this faith, you know. There's a mystery about you. You are a weird, peculiar person. How can you walk through what you're going through? The darkness and the pain of maybe a divorce or a bankruptcy. Or maybe what your kids are going through. Maybe a financial burden that you're going through. And yet you still have a joy in your heart. You still can shout praises to a God that you have never seen before. In spite of what you're going through. There is a mystery to you. What is this mystery? It is I have Christ. In me, the hope of glory, this hope that is like an anchor for my soul that can carry me. Jesus will carry you through dark seasons in your life if you will let him. He is with you. He is in you. And if he is in you, then he is for you. And if you, come on, if he is for you, then who can be against you? There is a king in you. And he loves you. Jesus as he walked the streets, he walked looking at people that the world overlooked, that the, the world tossed to the side. But Jesus looked with eyes of mercy and grace and, and saw a woman in John 8 caught in a, in a horrible sin. And they threw her at the feet of Jesus. And they said, Jesus, what should we do with her? We caught her hooking up, having sex with married people. And we, we, we ought to kill her right now. What do you say, Jesus? Jesus says, I see a king inside of that sinner. And you know what? Jesus didn't have any rocks in his pockets. Mm -hmm. The only one that could throw a rock didn't have any rocks in his pockets. Right. Stop walking around with rocks in your pockets, comparing your sin to somebody else's yeah. sin. If it wasn't for the grace of God, you would be dead in your sins and your trespasses on your way to hell. But because Jesus is not an accuser, he's an advocate who reaches down and said, where are your accusers, honey? They are gone. Well, I don't accuse you either. And there is a king in you, honey. Amen. Stand up. Amen. Walk with boldness. Your past doesn't define you anymore. Amen. Most scholars believe that was Mary Magdalene that he was talking to. She ended up being the first person that recognized Jesus walking out of the tomb. But she never would have been able to do that if it wasn't for Jesus seeing the king inside of her. Mm. Mm. I, I thought of this guy. His name was Blind Bart. 
<laughs> Blind Bartimaeus. I don't like Bartimaeus, so I'm just gonna call him Bart, okay? You cool with that? Thank you. And so Blind Bart was always a little loud and boisterous. How many loud and boisterous people in this church? You get excited when Jesus walks by. A couple of people, but, but you know what? You're in good company, Pastor. Because Blind Bartimaeus, he got a little rambunctious when Jesus was walking by. He couldn't see, but he could feel the presence of God walking by him. And he started crying out. You read this, Mark chapter 10. He started crying out, Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. I, I need a healing. I need a miracle. And he was crying out. And everyone else was telling him to shut up. Shut up. You, you don't deserve to be shouting like that. You're blind. There, there are more, more qualified people that Jesus wants to talk to. But blind Bartimaeus didn't give a rip. He said, I know that God has a miracle for me. And he cried all the louder. When people try to put you down, you just need to cry all the louder Amen. for Jesus. Amen. I know he's in me. And you're Woo! not going to shut me up. He is the way, Amen. the truth, and the life. And you ain't going to shut me up. And he cried, and he cried, and suddenly, the only time in the Bible it ever says this. I wasn't planning on preaching. I swear, I was going to do a short little quick sermon. But it, this is the only time in the Bible it says Jesus stood still. Come on. He heard that cry. God hears your cries. Other people may try and put you down. Other people may try and tell you to shut up. But your cry is making Jesus stand still. And Jesus says, who is that man? Bring him to me. Amen. And I love Blind Bartimaeus. This is what he did. He, he, he was wearing a, a cloak because... When you're a beggar, you, you wore a certain uniform so you could look like a beggar. So you could get the attention that a beggar needed to get in order to get money, in order to panhandle, you needed to look like a beggar. And when Jesus called him, this is what he did. You read it, Mark chapter 10. It says he took off his begging clothes. Mm. He threw his cane down. Mm. Sometimes before you even get the miracle, you need to thank God for the miracle. I am not a beggar any longer. David said, I was young and now old, and I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed begging for bread. And suddenly Jesus said in blind Bartimaeus, there is a king inside of you. Great is your faith, Bart. You may see. And he got the miracle because he was boisterous. And praise God even before it came. There is a king in you. Some of you, you have lost the king in you. You had it at one point. You were excited at one point. God could use you at one point. But you went through some stuff. Started to blame other people. Maybe you blame me. Maybe you blame another pastor. Maybe you blame your boss. Maybe you blame a spouse. Maybe you blame your kids. People didn't treat you fairly. And suddenly you got bitter. You got frustrated at God. You lost the king that was in you. God wants to heal that bitterness. God wants to take that out of you. Why are you crying? Why are you so angry? Why are you so frustrated? Jesus is with you just as strong today as yesterday. He will never leave you nor forsake you. It says that he will go before you and he will make a way for you. What you are going through right now didn't catch God off guard. He has already prepared you for this trial that you are going to go through. He has prepared you for this. He not only has your, your front preparing the way, but last week he's got your back. He's got my back too. Amen. His mercy surrounds me. Amen. But you lost the king in you. I thought about this guy, Elijah. He lost the king in him. And Elijah, when he had the king in him, he could make fire come down from heaven. He lost the king inside of him, and suddenly he got depressed and suicidal and was living in a cave every single day because he lost the king in him. This guy, Samson, when he had the king inside of him, he could kill over a thousand Philistines with the jawbone of a donkey. But then when he lost the king in him, he got... He got taken out by a UFO. <laughs> I remember that UFO, unclosed female object. He got taken out by Delilah, by a, by a sexy woman, and he got a haircut. But you know what, Samson, it grew back. Yes, yes it did. Glory. That ba bad haircut you got, that bad haircut I got, you know what, it's going to grow back. 
Maybe you went through a fall because you were stupid and you fell into temptation and you feel embarrassed right now. I want you to know your calling is growing back right now. Yeah, and a lot of times God has to take you in a, in a quiet season where he needs to restore you and build you up. But your hair will grow back. Amen. And Samson, man, he got the king back. His hair grew back, and suddenly at his end, he killed more Philistines and did more for the Lord in his end than he ever did in the beginning of his life. God will do the same thing for you. Amen. Amen. There is a king inside of you. Mm. Amen. There is a calling that God has placed in your life that no man can take away. No woman that breaks your heart can take away. No boss by firing you can take away. Amen. Nothing can take away the king inside of you. No divorce can take it away. No bankruptcy can take it away. No financial hardship can destroy that calling. No matter what you've been through, no matter what mistakes you've made, cannot take the king from you. He is in you yeah. still. I, I close with, with this story. You, you guys can come up. There was this <clears throat> teenage young man, and he grew up in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, and he never met his father. He was the son of a prostitute, and one day his mom got sick and tired of raising him, so they told Bill was his name, pack up your suitcase, we're going to go on a bus. So Bill packed up his suitcase, went with his mom to the bus station. Mom said, I'll be right back. One day went by, two days went by, three days went by, she never came back. And he waited at that bus station for three whole days with a suitcase. And there was this Sunday school teacher from Assemblies of God that walked by and saw him there the first day and he said, I'm waiting for my mom to come back, saw him there the second day. And then finally the third day he said, come with me, we're, we're going to go to the police station and see what's going on. And, and Bill was, was, I mean, broken and angry and screaming, and they took him to the police station. And no, no one would claim him. No one, they couldn't find anyone in his family. And finally, this guy says, I'll, I'll adopt you. And they adopted Bill into his family. And he was an Assemblies of God Sunday school teacher. They sent Bill, when he was in his 20s, to a youth camp in Phoenix, Arizona where the founder of the LA Dream Center, Tommy Barnett was. And Bill made his way to Phoenix and got radically saved. And one, one, one day after a Sunday service, he, he, he was so skinny, this kid. He was six foot six. He had long, stringy, unkept hair, no money for any decent clothes. Pastor Matthew, when he tells the story, says he was so skinny, if he turned sideways and stuck his tongue out, he would look like a zipper. <laughs> and and this, this kid went up to Pastor Tommy and, and started telling Pastor Tommy, man, you, you have changed my life. And, and I, have a, I have a passion to reach the lost. I have a passion to go out and bring the homeless in. I, I, I believe, Pastor Tommy, if, if you could give me one bus, I could fill that bus up with broken homeless people in Phoenix, Arizona, and we could bring them to church, and, and we could see them saved, and we could see them restored, we could see great things happen with them. Pastor Tommy, what do you think? Pastor Tommy's looking at this 22-year-old kid that, that look, doesn't look like, I mean, come on, let's be real, like, okay, sure, okay, sounds good, great idea, but Pastor Tommy said there was just something in this kid. And God brought him right to Samuel 16, where God doesn't look at the outward appearance, but God sees your heart. Other people may look at you and look down at you and say, you're too young, you're too old, you're not good enough, or you're a little too overweight, or you're a little too this or that. But God says, I have a king in you. I will use you right now. And Pastor Tommy said, all right, I get you a bus. Bought him a bus. He went and filled it up. Got him five buses. Filled those up. 10 buses, fill those up. 20 buses, fill those up. 50 buses every single week. This guy, Bill Wilson, filled them up, bringing thousands to the Lord. He ended up going to 
to Brooklyn, New York, started a ministry there. He preaches every single Sunday morning, has over 26,000 kids that he buses into church every single week. He's been shot in the face once. He's been stabbed three times, but he is being used in such a mighty way by God that he would have never been able to do anything if it wasn't for a pastor who said, there is a king in you. There is a calling on you. You heard my, my wife tell her testimony. Both parents in prison, living in hotels, hooked on drugs as a teenager. I mean, it's most people would say that's a statistic. You're going to get pregnant when you're 17 years old. You're going to live on welfare the rest of your life. It's just going to be the same life that your mom has. But then she found the king in her. And there was a pastor in L.A. called Pastor Matthew Barnett. And he said, honey, there is a king. There is a calling in you. You just give your life to God. He will do amazing things for you. And you're going to reach thousands and thousands more. So I'm going to be a pastor that sees the king in you. I don't care where you come from. I don't care what your background is. I don't care what the color of your skin is. I don't care what you look like. I believe that God so loved the world that he gave his only son that whosoever, whosoever, that's me, that's you, believes in him that the king comes in my life. And when the king comes in your life, greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. If you believe that, I want you to just stand your feet right now. Praise you, Jesus. Just, if you will, just close your eyes. Just to begin to thank God that you woke up this morning. Praise you, Jesus. Praise you, Jesus. Let's worship Him right now. Praise you, Jesus. It is to come. It is the one who lives in us. The great 